Hello friends, it's Cassie. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I have some cards for you using some uh, Avriel products. These are new products. This one is the Avriel Peekaboo Jungle and I am just kind of becoming very obsessed with their peekaboos because they're adorable and I love the little paws. Uh, and this one's just fun. It has some really nice sentiments and I love the little critters. And I'm also gonna be using the matching dye that goes with it. Now my reason for using these is because I wanted to use this new to me Nuvo Aqua Shimmer Powder and I'm going to do it on some watercolor paper. This is just some expert watercolor paper by Arteza. It's the one I typically use these days. Uh, but this is the Nuvo Shimmer Powder and if you've never used it before, uh, this one's called Atlantis Burst. And I just thought the color was really, really pretty on the website that I found it. And so uh, I've had great luck with the Ken Oliver Color Burst and so I wanted to give these a try. I will say that I believe these are a little bit different and um, I use them the exact same way that I do my color bursts uh, and so all I'm doing is I'm kind of tapping the bottom of the bottle and then I'm going to spritz some water on this one and I'm not really enjoying how much it's spreading it's not spreading a whole lot with that water it's kind of just staying put and it's frustrating me just a little bit so I'm putting a little bit more powder knowing that it's not going to spread a whole lot and then I have to spritz more water and then it kind of all just becomes fairly not flat that's not the word I'm looking for because there is still some variation in the color um, but it's not the look that I was necessarily going for so while it's still wet I'm going to put a little bit more of that color burst on it or um, the uh, sh shimmer powder on there hoping that because it's already wet that that shimmer powder will spread kind of spread out with the water that's already on there and I'm not really having a lot of luck so I'll spritz a little more water try to get it to move a little bit and uh, even kind of stick it in some of that because I have quite a bit of water at this point and so it's bowing and as you can tell then on the edges all it's going to do is kind of collect in those edges I have another piece of that watercolor paper that's a little bit smaller and I didn't want to waste too much of that powder so I thought I'll just go ahead and start a base here and pick up some of that shimmer powder leftover spray and I'm moving it around. I'm just kind of taking the paper and trying to get it to manipulate just a little bit. And so on this one, I thought I'll spray the water first and see if that does anything different. And it does a little bit. So spraying the water first really did help the powder to kind of move, but then it just stopped. So again, I bring in the water and I'm, in this one, I'm still kind of trying to manipulate it a little bit because I don't want it to be all just on the edges. And I'll bring in a little bit more powder and Again, I like this look, but in this one, there's just a lot of white space. And typically, I don't mind a lot of white space. This just wasn't doing what I wanted it to do. So I was getting a little bit frustrated. I like the color burst because it can give a lot of texture. And while there's a lot of texture on this one right here, it's still, the powder's pretty clumped in areas, and I didn't like that. And so I thought, all right, I'll dry it with my heat tool, and I'm going to bring in the water again and see if I can get anything to happen there. Because I didn't want to spritz too much water, but I probably didn't spritz enough because the powder's really not moving too much. So again, I'll come in and spritz some more, see if I can get a little bit of texture. Maybe I thought if these worked in layers, it would work a little better. But again, I'm really not having a lot of luck. Not getting the texture that I want because the powder's just not really moving a whole lot. So then I'll come in with the heat tool again. And there's some texture on there and you can tell there is a ton of shimmer. So if you like shimmer, this stuff is for you, but it does rub off a little bit. So I can rub it off on my thumb, but the shimmer is incredible. Now, because I wanted a lot of texture, I was hoping I'd get a lot of texture just by the powder. I decided to pull out one of my 3D texture fades. This one's called Botanical. And I'm gonna run this through my die cutting machine and you can do it through yours. Just read up on how to do it. And yes, my plates have seen better days. I could definitely use better plates, be, um, newer plates. They've dropped quite a few times, but that's how it looks. And I love the texture on that. So I do it on all three pieces. Now I'm gonna bring in the stamp set and I'm using some Express It cardstock. This is my favorite for Copic coloring. And I'm gonna ink up my images using Memento Tuxedo Black Ink. I'll stamp those down and I'm actually gonna do it three times because I have three cards. So we'll move that paper and we'll keep stamping. And here I am stamping the banner. I needed one more of those and let me show you how you can manipulate the sentiments to kind of fit in that banner because you notice the banner isn't straight so I'm going to go ahead and stick it on my banner 
and close the door of the misty and then I'm going to take and just sort of manipulate that sentiment until it looks how I want it to. That's the cool thing or one of the cool things about the clear polymer stamps or photopolymer is that you can manipulate them sometimes to get them to do what you want. You can't always do that with red rubber. So now that all of those are all stamped, we're gonna go ahead and start doing our Copic coloring. I'm bringing in the Y5, and obviously I am not coloring these little guys to look exactly like how a cheetah would look because these are cartoons. So <laughs> we're just bringing in colors I like. So we've got the Y15, and then I'm gonna do the YR23 for his darker shade, and then I'll blend that out just a little bit. I'm gonna leave most of his muzzle white just because I want to. But I'm going to bring in the RV11 for his nose and ears, and I do that for all of the critters. And then for my lion, his base color is going to be Y26. I don't have a second color for his base color, so what I'm going to do is I am going to just let that dry. I'm going to set that down and let it dry a bit because alcohol markers will tend to stay a little bit damp. I know that sounds kind of funny, but they do. And while it stays damp, then I can move on to his mane, which I'm using E99. Sorry, that's off the screen just a little bit. And then I'm going to bring in some E29, no, E37, my bad. E37 for the darker shade around his mane. And I'm just going to flick that out just a little bit. And then I don't end up um, trying to blend that out with the E99. Now I'm bringing in that Y26 one more time now that things have sort of dried just to add a little bit of texture to the lion. For my zebra, we've got W3, W7, and W9. And doing it on his hooves there was pretty much pointless because I ended up covering that completely. But I am just bringing that W3 only on um, where the zebra would be, you know, because he's mostly white. Obviously, his little spot or his stripes are already colored in. So then I'll bring in the, the next colors. And then for our giraffe, we have the same thing going on. We're going to just use the YR27 for most of his color. And then we'll, when we move on to his spots and his muzzle, we're going to go ahead and let that dry a little bit because we're going to bring in the YR27 once again just for a little bit of subtle change. So we're using E29 and E49 for his spots and his muzzle. And then... The E29 is our starter, and then we'll come in with the E49 for a little bit of shadowing and shading. And then now that that's fairly dry, we'll come in with that YR27 again, just to add a little bit of depth. And we'll do that for all three. And then the RV11. For all the banners, I am using that W3 just to add a little bit of texture on the edges. And now that everything is colored, I'm pulling out the matching dies. I'm going to tack that down with a little bit of washi tape. Obviously, this is going to take me a little bit of time because I have quite a few images to do. And you'll notice I did stamp out lots of those leaves, about five per card, using some of my Simon Hurley Tropical Tango ink. And then I'll run that through my die cutting machine you know, like a hundred times because there's so many things on these pages, but that's okay. It adds for a lot of fun for the cards. Our card bases are going to be some Bruce Monroe lunch bag card stock. It's one of my favorites uh, in craft because it's just a little bit darker. It actually looks like a lunch bag to me, but it is a hundred pound card stock. So I like that. And so I'm getting those all ready to go. And then I am going to bring in some foam tape. This is the scrappy, hmm, did I write that down? I may not have written it down. It's the Scrapbook Adhesives Crafty Foam Tape. And I am going to basically just keep this to the very bottom of the banner. And you might be asking, why would you do that? Why not just stick it in the middle? Well, I want to be able to tuck each of those animals to, on, behind the banner. And in order to do that, I need to have a little bit of room. So that's why I chose this tape. It's not quite as wide. And it also worked really well to just kind of bend the way I needed it to. So I'll peel off the release paper on one of those, stick it down to the front of my card panel. And then you'll notice I have all those white pieces up there. Those are actually cut out of fun foam. So I used the matching die for each one of those critters and I cut them out of fun foam. It's just a fun way and it's actually a lot easier than trying to put a bunch of foam tape all over the back of them. It takes a lot less time and it gives them dimension and they'll hold up through the mail pretty good. So I'm gonna adhere those down using some Nouveau Deluxe liquid glue and I'll do that for all of those critters. They're gonna be on the outsides of the cards and then I'll tuck them behind and when I have it figured out how I want those placed on there, 
then I will go ahead and put each one of those critters down. So I'm happy with how that looks. And this is where you'll see how it was kind of nice to have the top part of the banner unoccupied because this way I can shove each of those little critters behind the banner. Once I have all of those down, now it'll be time to put their little paws and their little hooves onto the banner so it looks like they're holding on to it or just tucked behind it or however you wanna do it. So I'm gonna use my crystal katana to pick up each of the pieces and then once again use that Nouveau Deluxe liquid glue to adhere down each of their little paws and each of their little hooves. I'm telling you, this is the part that just makes it for me. Like, <laughs> they're so stinking cute with their little paws. And so I end up having a little bit of a different design for each of the three cards that I make. I don't show you all of them. Basically, it's the same concept uh, that we're doing here. So I'll show you those at the end. But I did save one critter per card that I could stick on the inside of each one of those, which is kind of fun. You know how I like to decorate the insides of my cards these days. Uh, but I'm also going to take and I'm going to adhere down some of those leaves on the sides of the banners. And like I said, I do it a little bit different for each of the three cards. But it's fun. I thought at first maybe we'll do three, but I thought let's do two on each side. We have four critters, so why not? And then I'll adhere that down to the front of my card base, just using that same liquid glue. So easy peasy. And it's later that I decide to go ahead and put a critter on the inside of each of those. So now that that's tacked down, let me show you how each of these turned out. So here was that first one, the one we just showed you that I made. I love all the shimmer. So that is fun. And there's the inside of that one. And there's the second one, the inside of that one. And then here's our third one. It's a little bit different design, but I thought that was fun too. So yeah, there they all are. So as I said, this was about Nouveau Shimmer Powder. Uh, I really do like the color burst. If you'd like me, you know, if it's something you're interested in me doing, possibly like comparing and contrasting, showing you the difference like on film, how color burst is compared to Nouveau Shimmer Powder, I would ha be happy to do that. Just leave that in the comment section down below. If you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already done so. And as always, I will see you very soon in the next video. Bye, everybody.